You are listening to Meet the Thriller Author, the podcast where I interview writers of mysteries, thrillers, and suspense books. I am your host, Alan Peterson, and this is episode number 130. In this episode of the podcast, we'll be meeting David Rothlin, whose first book in his Detective Sasha Frank mystery series, Deliberate Duplicity, was published on January 5th of this year. Uh, David had a long career in business and that gave him the opportunity to travel to all but one continent and countless countries around the globe. And he decided during that time of travel to start to write his first novel, Came uh, Deliberate Duplicity. He lives in Illinois with his wife. He's currently working on the second uh, novel of the series. And it was fun to talk to uh, uh, David about his uh, new book and about transitioning from the business world to uh, writing uh, thrillers and mysteries. And so stay tuned for that interview coming up here in just a moment. I wanted to thank you for rating and reviewing this podcast. I've seen your reviews pop up on Apple Podcasts and the other directories. I do appreciate your help in spreading the word about this podcast to other fans of thriller and mystery books. And if you haven't uh, had a chance to do so yet, or if you're new to the podcast, please go to thrillingreads.com forward slash rate to rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you're listening to the, this show. It helps me uh, get the word out. From there, you can also sign up to the newsletter to uh, get great discounts and uh, bargain prices on thriller and mystery books. So check out thrillingreads.com slash rate. All right, here is my interview with David Rolfing. Hey, everybody, this is Alan with Meet the Thriller Author. And for today's podcast, I have uh, David uh, Rolfing, whose book, Deliberate Duplicity, was published on January 5th. Uh, welcome to the show, David. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you for having me. Uh, did I butcher your last name? I should have asked you before. <laughs> uh, it's kind of phonetically Rolfing, like a P H I N G, so Rolfing. Okay, it was Rolfing. close. <laughs> close. Rolfing. Yeah. The the G does come in at the end, but yeah, Rolfing. Okay, all right, good. Sorry about that. Uh, no so problem. Can, you tell, can you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, your journey and what's led you to become a, a an author and write that first book? Uh, sure. Um, I've spent my entire career, or I did spend my entire career in the uh, automotive aftermarket uh, retail world. Uh, here in the United States and actually around the globe. And I retired a few years ago and uh, decided that I needed something to occupy my time other than golf and the other things people do when they're retired. And I've written a business blog for a number of years uh, about the industry that I was in. And I thought I'd try to write, and I enjoyed doing that. So I thought I'd try to write a, write a book. What led you to choose the uh, the thriller mystery type of genre? Were you a fan of those type of books when you were as a reader? Or? Yes, I've uh, well, I've, I've traveled uh, almost six million air miles oh, wow. in my life around the world, and uh, before the a lot of that was done during uh, the time before internet. So when you were on a plane, you could either watch a movie or read a book or sleep. Uh, and I chose to read books, so I read. A lot of books uh, over the years as I was flying around in airplanes, and I have gravitated over over time to really enjoying murder mysteries, detective mysteries, and that genre. So uh, that's when I decided to write a book, I decided to focus in that area. What are some of the books and authors that you like that, that have influenced you as a writer? Um, certainly Michael Connolly, mm -hmm. uh, Harry Bosch. I love Harry Bosch. Uh, and also uh, Lee Child's Jack Reacher series. Those are probably the two authors that I like the most. Yeah, two of my favorites as well. And um, so for uh, listeners that are not, not familiar uh, with your with your writing, uh, can you describe what your writing style is? What can readers expect from your, bo from your book? Uh, well, I think I provide a fair amount of uh, detail. I, understanding that I have a business background, I don't have a background in law enforcement or uh, being, you know, in the medical examiner field or CSI, that type of thing. Um, but I, I, I go into great detail, I think, uh, talking about the crime scenes and, and what the main character, Detective Sasha Frank, uh, sees and what he, how he thinks about processing a crime, uh, along with the same characters that might be from the medical examiner's office or CSI 
uh, staff. So uh, I think I go into really great detail on on the scene where where it takes place, things around the area uh, of that particular scene in the book. So I, I try to give a fair amount of graphic detail about you know murders that take place in the book as well as the investigation that follows up. So can you tell us about your about the uh, deliberate duplicity? Give us a little bit of a, of a background on what what the book's about. Certainly, the uh, it's set in Bloomington, Illinois, and when you look at someone like uh, Harry Bosch, uh, you know he's in L.A. And I thought it would be interesting to have a detective in a smaller town. I live in Bloomington, Illinois, and it's a town of about seventy five thousand people. And we don't have a lot of murders here. It's a fairly safe area of the Midwest. Uh, but I have a detective who is facing a murder that takes place on, an, on a landmark in the area. We have something called the Constitution Trail. And it's 43 miles of unused or abandoned railroad tracks that have been turned into you know, walking paths, riding paths, jogging paths. And I have the murders take place on the trail, in different parts of the trail. Yeah, and your um, your uh, uh, the killer's mo is uh, was very interesting. Uh, is is that um, how did they come up with that? Is that was that based on a, on, on a story, on a real story that you come across, or how, how did that come up with? No, I think uh, actually, I think my wife and other family and friends look at me a little differently today, but <laughs> I just uh, developed the, the manner in which these individuals are killed uh, and left on the trail and how they're posed. Uh, I, as I was writing the book, I just started thinking about, okay, what would be odd? Uh, what would be scary? What would be interesting? What would be intriguing uh, to readers, to me? Uh, and how how would I like to see a murder take place? How did how was someone killed? Uh, and then what happened afterwards? So yeah, it's it's kind of strange uh, thinking about my background, uh, seeing how I how I write and come up with things. But no, it it all just came through my my mind, uh, and I just kept adding details to murders um, that I thought would be interesting and a little quirky. As, at the same time. Yeah, I've had that too. When I'm writing my stuff, uh, sometimes my wife has come into the into my computer monitor. She's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's research. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I know. When you start, you know, trying to understand uh, how certain things might be accomplished and, and you check out, you know, how, how, how might somebody do this strange thing I'm thinking about in my mind? And I think that's where family and friends who, uh, have read the book uh, and read the book before it was published. Just they're like, how do you come up with this stuff? Uh, and it is, it is, it's strange. It's very strange. It's, uh, it, it's odd that I have developed this and, and hopefully readers will find it interesting and intriguing and will enjoy following, you know, the murders and the investigations into the, who may have done this. And can you tell us about the, uh, so your character, the main, the, the protagonist is a, is a detective, Sasha Frank. Can you tell us how you, um, how that character came in, came to existence? Yeah, I've had the name Sasha and Frank uh, for a long time. Um, I think they'd be great names for bulldogs. In fact, I have a bulldog on my back patio. It's just a metal bulldog uh, and it, we call it Frank. Um, but I came up with that name and then I decided that, a detective would be a good uh, character reference. His father in the book, his father is a ex FBI uh, agent and his mother is a, uh, someone who worked in the Russian embassy in Washington DC during the Cuban missile crisis and defected to the United States and married Sasha's father. So that's how I came up with the Russian first name and the somewhat Americanized last name. And so, what's been your uh, the the your publishing journey for you? So you wrote you wrote the book, and then and then that's like half the battle. <laughs> How can you right. describe the, the journey uh, to finally having your book out there? Well, I was uh, I was struggling a bit trying to find 
obviously someone who would be interested in publishing it. And initially, when I first thought about writing a book, uh, I was having drinks with a friend in Nashville. Uh, and he said, you should write a book about business and your experiences in business life. And I tried doing that. that I, I got nowhere fast. And uh, that's why I kind of pivoted to writing the murder mystery. And and I have another friend who happens to write business books. And he's a number one uh, New York Times bestseller on, on business genre. And he, I reached out to him and asked him. And he suggested uh, a publisher. And I reached out. And after some back and forth and them reviewing uh, the initial manuscript. Uh, and after about 60 days or so, uh, I was able to sign with them. I, I think finding a publisher is incredibly difficult. So um, I think I was very fortunate. It probably took me six months in total to, you know, trying to find somebody uh, that would be interested in the book, sending the manuscript out. Uh, but I, I think having someone who had a connection uh, you know, I come from the business world where connections are always very helpful. So uh, I was able to use someone I know, and they they provided me the intro into the publisher, which was incredibly helpful. Yeah, the networking is not just uh, super important for for the writing world as well. <laughs> well, I found that out. Yeah, because it <laughs> it was just hitting brick wall after brick yeah. wall, basically. <laughs> and and you're like, okay, well, I think the book is pretty good, um, and what is somebody not seeing in the book that I'm seeing in it? Now, I, I would say the initial manuscript script uh, that I sent out was a you know doorstop in size. I mean, it was it was huge. It was too many words, way too much detail. As I mentioned earlier, I, I go into a lot of uh, specifics and details about locations and the process of investigating. And uh, through the editing process, I you know trimmed a tremendous amount out of the book that was unneeded, unnecessary, uh, repetitive, uh, didn't move the storyline along. So I think uh, that that was helpful to get some of that started uh, before I actually found a publisher. And is this, um, is, is this going to be part of a series or is it a standalone? Uh, no, it is a part of a series. And I have uh, the second book actually just uh, before – we started talking today. I was working on uh, the editing with one of the editors on the second book. Uh, it's titled Cold Consequences. Also takes place in Bloomington, Illinois. And um, I had begun in early December writing a third book. So, yeah, my goal is to have a series of books about Detective Sasha Frank. And what's your writing process like then? So like, do you outline or do you write from the seat of your pants? Well, I did, you know, I read a lot of books uh, about how to write a book uh, before I started writing. And I had, uh, I, I followed kind of the outline that I read in how to write a book. And that was that you have to outline, you have to develop your characters, you have to do a lot of legwork before you start writing in order to write. And at least that's what I read. Some some of the articles said that I needed to do that, so that's what I try to do. And I I got nowhere in uh, in, my, in being able to write. And then I decided, no, I'm going to do it the way I would write a blog and just come up with because I used to write blogs. I, I'm just going to come up with this idea. I already have the character. Um, I know I'm going to have people die, and I want to make them unique and interesting intriguing scary all the different things that a hopefully a good story will will put forth and i just started writing so i would as i wrote the book i would write various chapters uh and in some instances not really chapters just writing because i started moving things around after i started uh after probably the first month or so of writing and i wrote three or four hours five hours a day and whenever I'd wake up in the middle of the night and think of something, I'd get up and start writing too. Uh, but then I'd start moving things around or adding a character that I thought would add more interest to the book. Uh, and I might then have to filter that character throughout other parts of the book uh, to make it interesting. So, yeah, so I'm, I would just sit down and start writing. And in the second book, uh, I did learn a lot in writing the first book that, you know, 
less is more quite often. Uh, so don't provide so many details uh, that aren't interesting or are repetitive or don't move the story forward. And so I've tried to incorporate that into my current writing style. Oh yeah. So like when you say you were working on the, on the edits in the second book and you started writing the third, so that's kind of like how you're dividing your, your writing day now. You like, um, you write the new one and then you edit the other one or do you like need to focus on one project at a time? You know, I pivoted now, uh, starting just late last week, I pivoted to the editing process, working with one of the editors at the publishers for the initial edit. Um, so really I've, I had to put the third book to the side just to focus on this. Cause I need to look at it for the next couple of weeks and, mm -hmm. and think about some of the, you know, criticism or ideas that, uh, publisher have come up with to see how I could change various aspects of the book and incorporate some of those changes. Again, at the end of the day, the thing I like about you know working with a publisher and editors is that they help you get rid of things that don't move the story forward and help keep a gripping tail in front of the reader. Um, like I said, less is more quite often. And in the first book, I didn't follow that path, but in the second book I did. So actually the editing process is going along pretty smoothly and quickly for me. Yeah. It's like, a, uh, the, yeah. Writing your first book was like a, kind of like a masterclass then like a crash course on that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It was, it was, it was, uh, when you've never done anything, uh, you know, I've, I kind of use my business ex experience, uh, in problem problem solving. So if Sasha Frank encountered something, I kind of sat back and would think, okay, well, if somebody came to me with a problem in business, you know, what are the steps you'd take to resolve the problem and make the problem go away? Uh, so I kind of did that, I think, in, in the initial book, but I've now incorporated, you know, wisdom that I've learned from a publisher and editors to help me refine that in the second book. And uh, what I was like, uh, ask because I'm a, I'm so curious and nosy. What what software program do you use? Do you use like Word for to write? I do use Word. Yeah. Yep, I do. I use Word. Yeah. And, and I write on a laptop. Oh, you write on a laptop? Okay. And do you do you always yep. have like the same spot, or do you like mix it around? <laughs> uh, I have a, a great room uh, with a big fireplace in it and a couple of big couches, and I typically will sit somewhere on one of the couches, uh, whether it's during the day when I might write or certainly in the middle of the night, I, I go to that room and, and in the dark, we'll just start writing. And I, that's the only place I write. And now for this, since the crazy year that we've had, had, has the pandemic changed your writing process at all? Did that change anything that affected anything for you? Uh, no, I don't think so very much. Um, I've, I, I tend to, what I've learned is I, I like to write in the winter mm. um, because in the spring, summer, and fall, I, I, I like to golf. And um, so I, I like to be outdoors during the uh, summer months. So I, I find myself liking to write in the winter because there's like right now when I look outside, uh, I live in a winter wonderland. We had an ice <laughs> storm and a few inches of snow. So uh, my backyard is just absolutely beautiful, um, but you can't go outside. It's too cold. So uh, it's it's a perfect time for me to write. Yeah, I know how that goes. I'm in uh, I'm in California now for like 11 years, but uh, before that, I was living in Minnesota. So that was, <laughs> I, I know Midwest winters. <laughs> They're good yeah, for writing. Was, they really are. I you know I've lived in California in the early 90s, and uh, certainly I, I enjoy that weather. And I enjoy going there uh, or going to Florida and finding warmer weather. Weather, But again, it's I like living in the Midwest and uh, I've lived all over the place and just gravitated back to here. So. And so you said the, sec the second book is with the editors. Is that going to come out next year? No, I think it's going to come out later this fall. Um, oh, cool. That would be my guess. Uh, hopefully uh, September, October timeframe. Uh, mm -hmm. The for this book, originally the plan was to have it come out last September, or October, and then the pandemic hit. So we got it pushed. Uh, it kept getting pushed because of issues with, mm -hmm. you know, the editor and, and the publisher having uh, 
you know, not being able to come into offices and working from home and all that. So it just got pushed. And uh, because of the political season we had uh, this fall, they suggested it get pushed into early January. So uh, hopefully this one will move along a little faster. Yeah, that's probably, probably a good idea with what's been going on in the last month or so here. <laughs> right. Uh, um, so uh, before I let you go, um, I always like to ask, uh, do you have a mix of aspiring writers that listen to this podcast? Any advice that you can give to aspiring writers? Well, I think for me, uh, I was someone who didn't aspire to be a writer and um, until much later in my life. And then I, then I decided that... Uh, I just give it a try. And I would say that, you know, for me, the process of writing, I don't want to say was fairly easy. Uh, I found writing easy. And I think the opportunity to write uh, a blog or to get some experience writing or, or having something published on a blog, you, you get feedback from people. So you get a general idea of how to write. And then you can hopefully, uh, as I did, I, I, kind of turn the writing skills that I was able to, uh, I, I hate to say honed, but to improve after writing a blog for 10 years or so and, and having someone edit my blog and going through that process. I think that helped me be a little, little prepared, but you, you just have to start for me. It, I just had to start writing and, you know, I bounced ideas, find somebody like I have uh, a great wife and I bounced ideas off her as I was writing the book and getting feedback. Uh, again, she looked at me a little odd on occasion, but uh, getting feedback from somebody that you trust, uh, I think is always helpful, but you just have to write and you, you have to write as I did. I wrote every day. Uh, now it, I wrote for three, three and a half months in writing the book, but I had to do it every day. I needed to keep it fresh in my mind. So I think setting it down and walking away from it wasn't helpful. Uh, so that would be one thing that I would say is that would be helpful to aspiring writers to once you've got your mindset right and just keep writing until you get it where you want it to be. Yeah, that's good advice too. And like you said too, and I mean, everybody writes their first draft and then there's, you know, then you, you, you improve it, you make it better afterwards. Uh, just get that first one done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you can't you can't do the editing or or working on improving it until you get it done. And yeah. you know, I think for me, writing the story, uh, and as I said earlier, I, I I'd write and then I'd get to a, a chapter or a part of the book where I think, you know what, I think it would be more interesting if I added this earlier into the book. So I'm going to shift things around a little bit. Now, what do I have to do to make that change flow through the rest of the book easily and, and crisply? Uh, I think to me, the one thing I learned from the editing process certainly is, you know, you need it to be crisp. You need to, everything needs to move the story forward. Uh, repeating information isn't helpful and it, it distracts from readers being able to hopefully enjoy a good murder mystery. And that's what I hope this is. All right. And now what's that? Where's the best place where uh, listeners can find you uh, on your website, I would imagine, or I do, I have a, a deliberate duplicity.com uh, where you can uh, find out more about the book as well as find different places that you can uh, order the book online. If you so desire. Uh, I also have a David Rolfing.com website where people could learn more about me as well. So both of those websites are uh, ones that I would direct them to. All right, great. And, and Deliberate uh, Duplicity is out now. It's available everywhere on Amazon, wherever you buy your books. So go check that out. Um, Absolutely. All right, the, yeah, all right, David. So thank you so much uh, for being on the podcast. I enjoyed talking with you. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate the time and uh, thank you very much. Thank you for listening to this episode of Meet the Thriller Author. For show notes and to access the interview archive, please visit my website at thrillerauthors.com. And please do visit thrillingreads.com forward slash rate to leave a rate and review of this podcast wherever it is that you are listening to it. It's the best way to help me get the word out about the podcast to others. And finally, check out my author website at alanpeterson.com. 
Thank you for listening. And until next time, when I'm back with another interview on Meet the Thriller Author. <laughs>